gain of sweetness, the reservoir of energy, of strength. India has been cultivating sugarcane since time immemorial. It is our prime commercial crop both economically and sociologically. Sugar industry is our second largest agro industry next only to textiles. 274 million tons of sugarcane is produced annually from 4.2 million hectares, 60% of which is used for white sugar production and the rest is utilized for gur, karsari, seed and chewing purposes. Today, India is one of the highest producers of sugar in the world. We produce over 20 million tons of sugar through more than 455 sugar mills employing nearly 35 million people. However, the demand for sugar for domestic consumption is on the rise due to increased per capita consumption, increase in population and the need to export for earning foreign exchange. The demand is estimated to reach 45 million tons by the year 2025. But there is no further possibility of horizontal expansion of cropping area. So, the increased demand can only be met if we can enhance production per unit area. That needs intense scientific research and a die-hard determination from all stakeholders. That needs a time-bound strategy. That needs consolidated efforts from specialized, dedicated institutes like the Sugarcane Breeding Institute, Coimbatore. We started our journey way back in 1912. In the beginning, the target was to evolve new and high yielding sugarcane varieties suitable for cultivation in subtropical India. Efforts to develop varieties for tropical India began in 1926. Coimbatore provided the perfect setting for the institute. The climate here remains flawlessly suitable for optimum flowering and seed set under natural conditions, which is a prerequisite for sugarcane breeding work. Thanks to the efforts of pioneers like Dr. C. A. Barber and Sir T. S. Venkatraman, the institute produced the first successful commercial hybrid of the world CO205 from an interspecific cross. This high yielding hybrid was the first demonstration of the successful use of wild species in crop improvement. The best of the early Coimbatore hybrids like CO281 and CO290 became popular not only in subtropical India but also in Australia, Louisiana, South Africa and the West Indies. Since then, many of our hybrids have found acceptance all over the world, not just as commercial varieties but also as parents to develop local varieties. The institute, which was under the control of the Union Ministry of Food and Agriculture, came under ICAR in 1969. During its nine decades of existence, the institute developed over 2,800 improved sugarcane varieties. Today, the varieties bred at this institute are cultivated throughout the country. Besides, the institute also provides the national hybridization facility to develop location-specific varieties to sugarcane research stations of different states. Sugarcane breeders from different states can make crosses of their choice at Coimbatore. The fluff will then be sent to the participating research stations and then raise the progenies at their respective locations to develop locally adapted varieties. The current mandates of the institute are to breed superior sugarcane varieties or genotypes, having higher sugar productivity as well as sustainability and to assist state sugarcane breeding programs. To conduct basic and strategic researches on crop improvement, production and protection aspects of sugarcane cultivation. To collect, maintain, evaluate, document and conserve sugarcane genetic resources. And to effect technology transfer, consultancy and human resource development in the areas of sugarcane agricultural research. Sugarcane Breeding Institute is one of the oldest agriculture research institutes in the country. 
we have the mandate of developing improved sugarcane varieties for the whole country and we have developed over 2,800 varieties during the past nine decades. Our varieties are cultivated throughout the country and uh, some of our varieties were popular in other countries as well. Sugarcane is now emerging as a multi-product crop used for sugar, power generation, ethanol and uh, as a source of fiber for paper production. Institute is reorienting its programs to meet all these requirements and to meet the challenges ahead. The three divisions and two sections of the Institute take this mission ahead. The Institute has well-equipped laboratories and farm facilities to undertake advanced research in mandated areas. But the actual strength of the Institute is its dedicated and motivated staff. The Institute also has one regional research station at Karnal in Haryana and two research centers at Kannur and Agali in Kerala. The Division of Crop Improvement evolves sugarcane varieties suitable for different agroclimatic regions of the country. Our varieties have always been the strength of sugarcane agriculture in the country, which was appreciated by its real beneficiaries, the farmers. Since the inception of All India Coordinated Research Project on Sugarcane in 1971, SBI has been supporting it by coordination of plant breeding programs of AICRP, fluff supply to various sugarcane research institutions and centers, gathering information on general and specific combining ability of biparental crosses, collaboration for development of national varieties, collaborative research on agronomy, physiology, entomology and pathology. One has to look at the large number of varieties that have come from SPI and from other stations through the fluff supply program to understand its contribution to the growth and sustenance of sugarcane production in the country. Genetic resources being the basic material for varietal improvement was given due importance. This institute is one of the two world repositories of sugarcane germplasm, the other being the subtropical horticulture research station of USDA at Miami, Florida, USA. The bulk of the collection of 4277 clones is maintained at the institute's research center in Kanur, whereas a part of wild species germplasm is maintained at Coimbatore. Efforts are on for in vitro germplasm conservation also. Explorations are conducted by the Institute even now to collect new sugarcane genetic resources from the wild. After characterization of the entire germplasm available with us, five germplasm catalogues were published, which are the only documented information of sugarcane germplasm in collections. Several interspecific and intergeneric hybrids were produced at this institute which contributed to the introgression of genes from wild species to cultivated sugarcane. The cytogenetical studies undertaken had given insight into the phylogenetic relationship and taxonomic status of different saccharum species and related wild grasses. The hybridization between selected clones is the start in evolving a new variety. Due to the small size of flowers, which are in large numbers in an inflorescence, emasculation is impractical for controlled crossing. Clones with less pollen fertility are selected as female parent and that with high pollen fertility as male parent. Sugarcane being cross-pollinated by wind, to prevent natural outcrossing, the female arrows are enclosed in pollen-proof cloth bags supported by wooden or aluminium cages, generally called lanterns. The floral branches in inflorescence of the male parent are collected around 5 a.m. and the anthers are made to dehyze in advance of its natural dehiscence by placing them under strong light to provide a higher temperature and lower humidity to hasten dehiscence. The dehized pollen is dusted onto the caged female arrows daily for 7 to 10 days. The seed maturation period is nearly 30 days.
the sugarcane seeds germinate on any suitable medium if the temperature is above 28 degrees Celsius and relative humidity 60%. Usually, the seeds are sown in flats or trays in a humid chamber. The seedlings are transplanted to poly bags when they are 25 to 45 days old. Subsequently, the seedlings are planted in the field when around 90 days old with a spacing of 60 cm within rows and 85 cm between rows and screened for yield and quality components. For a variety to be released for commercial cultivation, it has to undergo rigorous field testing. First is the Pre-Zonal Varietal Trial or PZVT. The selections from the pre-final clonal trials and selections from various other breeding and genetic experiments are assembled at five locations. Central Peninsula Zone Upper Peninsula Zone East Coast Zone North Central Zone and Northwest Zone. The selections from PZVT are given CO numbers and are multiplied for one year for entry into Zonal Varietal Trials or ZVT of All India Coordinated Research Project on Sugarcane. The identification of promising clones is done based on data from all the 22 testing centers. The best performers in the zonal trials are selected and identified for release in the AICRP workshop. These selected varieties are proposed for release to the state and central varietal release committees. After approval, the varieties are notified for commercial cultivation. Scientific sugarcane cultivation starts with choosing an appropriate variety for the location and season concerned. Improved sugarcane varieties from Sugarcane Breeding Institute are now available for almost all the sugarcane growing regions in the country. CO86032 It is the wonder cane of the decade. A hybrid involving CO62198 and COC671. A medium thick, reddish pink cane with prominent ivory marks on the internodes recorded a mean cane yield of 115 tons per hectare and commercial cane sugar of 15.42 tons per hectare. Best suited for October and January to February planting. CO86032 is suited to a wide row spacing and intercropping will not reduce its yield. The ratoons give excellent yields. CO89003 for Haryana and Punjab. This is an early maturing high quality sugarcane variety, is a progeny of the cross CO7314 and CO775. Cane yield ranging from 75 to 88 tons per hectare. Crop stand is excellent in upland soils and also in saline soils. Moderately resistant to red rot disease, whereas it is susceptible to wilt disease. This could be a substitute for COJ64 as it is better in yield, quality and ratoon performance. CO94008 A promising variety for peninsula zone. Evolved through hybridization of CO7201 and CO775. A mean cane yield of 126 tons per hectare and commercial cane sugar 16.72 tons per hectare. It is moderately resistant to red rot and smut, moderately resistant to drought and tolerant to salinity. A1 quality jaggery and 14% fiber. Other significant releases of SBI are CO94012, which is the Soma clone of COC671, a high sugar variety that is spreading fast in Maharashtra. CO99004, a progeny of the cross CO62175, CO86250, a high sucrose, high yielding variety with resistance to red rot, tolerance to drought, salinity and internode borer and yields good quality jaggery. CO98014, a high yielding high sugar variety was recently released for subtropical zone. 
It is a hybrid of the Cross CO8316 and CO8213 and has high fiber. The impact of uh, our varieties in the varietal scene had been tremendous. The productivity of sugarcane in the country was 30 tons per hectare during 1930s and uh, now it stands at uh, 65 tons per hectare which is a substantial improvement. The varieties developed at SPA Coimbatore 2 have been largely responsible for this improvement in productivity. Recent advances in biotechnology have contributed significantly to the understanding of the sugarcane genome. This opens up a plethora of opportunities for the improvement of the crop through genetic manipulations. SBI has a separate discipline for research and application of this modern technology in developing molecular maps of different species of saccharum and varieties of sugarcane, leading to saturated genetic maps of sugarcane with loci for important phenotypic traits mapped into it. DNA markers linked to important traits to enable breeders to select the required characters with more precision. Sugarcane transgenics are a distinct possibility now with several transgenics incorporating disease, pest and herbicide resistance genes undergoing testing, genome characterization of saccharum and identification of molecular markers for red rot resistance are also being taken up. Efforts are also on to identify molecular markers linked to high sugar content and smut resistance. The first sugarcane transgenic in India is already in place and has been developed at the institute through biolistic approach. SPI has effectively used tissue culture technology. With tissue culture, soma clonal variation was introduced and a number of soma clones with superior agronomic traits have been developed. The institute has also developed micropropagation techniques to produce healthy seed material at a rapid pace. Micropropagation is also done for gaining the original vigor that the variety has lost due to continuous exposure to biotic stresses for a longer period and can provide better yield. Since 1991, this seed technology laboratory at SBI Coimbatore has been doing exemplary research in the field of true seed and cane seed of sugarcane. This lab has been responsible for standardization of methodologies. Seed drying, fluff defuzzing, seed testing for germination and seed storage. Technology for taking sugarcane bud chips manually using a bud chipping machine was developed and the treatment, packing, transport and raising of seedlings were standardized. A better harvest in sugarcane using existing land resources is only possible when, along with genetic research, one also conducts crop production research. The institute has come up with some very pertinent findings for farmers. Sugarcane is usually grown in ridges and furrows system with normal row spacing of 75 to 90 centimeters. Closer spacing desirable for early, short duration and shy tillering varieties and under poor soil fertility status. Wider row spacing is advisable under high fertility conditions with good irrigation facilities and for long duration and high tillering varieties. SBR suggests a seed rate of 6.5 sets per meter length of row for sugarcane under normal row spacing of 90 centimeters. While for wide rows, the optimum seed rate may be around 9 sets per meter row length. Use of dual row planting, that is, sets placed in two rows 20 centimeters apart in the widened furrow bottom, gives significantly higher cane yield than single row planting in wide row. The fertilizer requirement of sugarcane is in any case quite large. 100 tons of cane yield requires an average of 100 kg nitrogen, 60 kg phosphorus and 225 kg of potassium per hectare. But to maximize the potential of the yield, one needs an integrated nutrient management approach where chemical, organic, biological fertilizers and manures are advocated in suitable combinations. These nutrients complement each other to produce a synergistic effect to optimize input use, maximize production and sustain it without impairing the crop quality or soil health. To derive maximum benefits from the applied nutrients, 
the fertilizers need to be applied at optimum growth stage of the crop. Apply phosphatic fertilizer in the furrow bottom before planting sugarcane sets and mix slightly with the soil. Phosphatic fertilizer should not be broadcast on the field. The first application of nitrogen should be at the start of the tillering phase. In the tropical belt, first application is done at 45 days after planting and the second top dressing at 90 days after planting. Application of nitrogen beyond 120 days in a 12-month crop will have adverse effect on juice quality. Nitrogen works better along with potassium. Therefore, apply potash fertilizers along with nitrogen on the 45th and 90th day. Biofertilizers like nitrogen fixing bacteria can be applied. The nitrogen fixing bacteria found efficient in sugarcane crop include Azotobacter, Azospirillum, and Acetobacter. Bacillus megatherium, a phosphate solubilizing bacteria, improves the phosphorus uptake and phosphorus availability, leading to about 12% higher cane yield. Another major issue with sugarcane is facing the micronutrient problem. The problem arises due to intense sugarcane cultivation and inadequate supply of organic matter. Iron deficiency leads to intervenal chlorosis and stunted growth. This could be corrected by repeated spraying of ferrous sulphate at 0.5% to 1% concentration. Addition of pressed mud and farmyard manure reduces chlorosis. Zinc deficiency, particularly in soils where paddy is grown in rotation. This can be corrected by spraying 0.5% zinc sulphate. Soil application of ferrous sulphate and zinc sulphate at 25 kg each per hectare helps. Apply at least 10 tons per hectare farmyard manure or compost or well decomposed pressed mud at the time of final land preparation. Sow green manure crops like dencha or sun hemp on one side of the ridge and harvest it in situ after 45 days. SBI Coimbatore has come up with many helpful techniques. One of the techniques developed by SBI, the pre-emergence application of atrazine has now become a common practice among sugarcane growers of India. In fact, many of the ongoing techniques that they use have had their origins in SBI. Techniques developed for induction of flowering in non-flowering varieties and also for delaying flowering greatly help in breeding. Using chemical ripeners for inducing early cane maturity and chemicals for long-term juice preservation, pre- and post-harvest techniques. Use of service drip irrigation system, up to 40% saving in water. Standardization of the techniques of recycling of sugarcane waste. Addition of enriched pressed mud improves yield. Since 40 to 50% of the cane area is under ratoon crop, it is imperative to obtain high ratoon yield as well. Spread the trash in the furrows and compress either by trampling or by any other means. This improves organic matter, nutrient status, soil physical condition and thus improves ratoon productivity. Stubble shaving to facilitate healthy underground buds to sprout and give a good initial crop stand with better root system. Off barring or shoulder breaking is an operation wherein the ridges are broken or cut on either side using a spade or a plow. Off barring facilitates quicker development of fresh root system and helps in vigorous growth of the young crops. Gap filling should be done at 25 to 30 days with pre germinated sets. SBI Coimbatore has come up with a few important findings that help farmers to improve sugarcane yield. Soaking of sets in saturated lime water, urea and potash spray 2.5 kg per 100 liters of water during formative phase that is 60, 90 and 120 days helped in mitigating water stress effect considerably. Cane trash mulch was found to increase the rate of tillers and tiller survival. In small and marginal holdings, application of potassium and mulching the alternate rows increases yield and quality. Soil moisture is one of the factors controlling the variation in intensity of flowering from year to year and location to location. 
low moisture reduces the intensity of flowering. Technologies have been developed by SBI4 intercropping in wide row spaced sugarcane, organic inputs for sugarcane agriculture, production of good quality value added jaggery, managing pre and post harvest deterioration in sugarcane and varieties have been identified for saline and alkaline soils. SBI Crop Protection Division has come out with certain findings over a period of time of its extensive research. These findings have helped the farmers to a large extent. Identification of an effective strain of T-Viride for management of Pythium root rot of sugarcane seedling. Standardization of an indirect ELISA to detect red rot infection at a very early stage of disease development. Identification of an effective strain of T-Viride for management of Pythium root rot of sugarcane seedling. Red rot is one of the most dreaded sugarcane diseases responsible for the elimination of several important sugarcane varieties in India. SBI has developed a number of red rot resistant varieties. Co-99004 and Co-98014 are resistant to red rot with commercial potential evolved recently at this institute. Crop rotation with paddy crop will also contain the disease. Smut is a fungal disease widely prevalent in parts of Karnatak, Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra and other states. Research results from SBI indicate that sets from smut affected fields should be treated in hot water at 50 degrees centigrade for one hour or 52 degrees centigrade for half an hour along with systemic fungicide biotone at 0.1% concentration to eliminate the set bone infection. Most of the recently evolved varieties from the institute also possess resistance to smut. Wilt is an important fungal disease affecting crop production in parts of Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, Orissa and subtropics. To manage the disease, planting disease resistant varieties is suggested. Grassy shoot disease is a phytoplasmal disease widely prevalent in all parts of India, particularly high in Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh and Orissa. Studies conducted at SBI indicated that the grassy shoot disease can be eliminated from infected sets by treating the sets in aerated steam at 50 degrees Celsius for one hour. Ratoon stunting disease is considered as the most important cause for sugarcane varietal degeneration. SBI suggests disinfect the cane cutting knives with 1% Lysol. Treat with AST at 50 degrees Celsius for one hour. Follow three-tier nursery program. Set rot or pineapple disease can be effectively controlled by set treatment with systemic fungicide, namely carbondazim at 0.05% concentration. Providing adequate drainage in the field also helps in avoiding the disease. Yellow leaf disease caused by sugarcane yellow leaf virus reduces sugarcane growth during maturity phase and it seriously affects crop growth in ratoon. This disease is also one of the causes of varietal degeneration. Planting of healthy seed and reducing different abiotic stresses are suggested to manage the disease. About 220 insect pests and 76 non-insect pests ravage sugarcane crop in India. These insect pests reduce sugarcane yield by about 15%, drastically bring down sugar recovery and affect the quality of jaggery. Research is underway at the institute to develop various tactics to combat these pests. Borers constitute a major group of pests that attack the crop in different stages. Shoot borer attacks the crop at an early stage killing the central shoot. Top borer attacks all stages of crop growth. Internode borer bores into top intermodes of grown up sugarcane and feeds inside. Among the several options available for the management of these three borer pests, deployment of pheromone traps with species-specific lures at appropriate dosage and time early in the season is the most recent and effective tool. Biological control using parasitoids and pathogens is an important component in sugarcane pest management. The sucking pest woolly aphid has invaded tropical India a couple of years back. Diphyaphidavora is a predator of the woolly aphid 
which can be mass multiplied by a low cost tray method even by individual farmers. To obtain eggs of the predator, petri plates containing predator cocoons are placed inside oviposition cages together with infested leaf bits. Moths emerging from the cocoons lay eggs on these leaf bits which are inoculated on aphid infested leaf bits in galvanized iron trays. Aphid infested leaf bits are provided in batches for the predator larvae. Cocoons of the predator can be collected in about 18 days for field release. The entomopathogenic fungus Bavaria brongniarti is a potential natural enemy of the pest which can be easily mass cultured and formulated on sugarcane byproducts. When applied to the soil repeatedly, the fungus can offer long term protection of the crop against the pest. Infochemicals can be identified using high pressure liquid chromatography or HPLC technique. Using such techniques, infochemicals in sugarcane plant and shoot borer have been identified. Genotypes with multiple pest resistance have been identified for utilization in resistance breeding programs. Pretilinca zei is the most widespread plant parasitic nematode of sugarcane followed by root knot nematode. Eco-friendly approaches for nematode management include green manuring, application of pressed mud or farmyard manure, trash mulching, application of oil cakes at 2 tons per hectare during field preparation and crop rotation. With time, the Sugarcane Breeding Institute has evolved as an institution without walls. Many of our activities take place at a wide range of institutions as well as at the sugar factory or the village level. Participatory technology transfer is another mode utilized by this institute for faster speed of technology to the farming community. The institute is involved in the first line transfer of technology through its various programs. Frontline demonstrations are being organized in farmers' fields to popularize the promising varieties and technologies of the institute. Institute Village Linking Program was successfully conducted in three villages of Coimbatore district during 2000 to 2005 in which the technologies were assessed and refined through verification trials and on-farm trials in the farmer's field. The assessed and refined technologies were widely adopted by the farmers of these villages, leading to a remarkable improvement in their socio-economic conditions. The Institute also organizes sugarcane research and development workers' meetings in Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, South Karnataka and North Karnataka. Training programs on sugarcane production technology are organized at national and state levels. The Institute also has its regular publications such as SBI quarterly newsletter, annual report, research highlights and extension pamphlets. Messages are regularly sent to newspapers, agricultural magazines and programs on All India Radio for the benefit of farming community. The Sugarcane Breeding Institute Museum caters to visiting scientists, cane development personnel, farmers and students by way of displaying details on sugarcane varieties, production and protection technologies. Popular sugarcane varieties are being demonstrated as a live herbarium in museum plots. Farmer scientists interactive meetings, field visits, exhibition stalls and video shows mark the Kisan Mela being conducted every year at the institute. Video films on various sugarcane technologies and computer-based extension tools that is, interactive multimedia module on sugarcane production and expert system on sugarcane pests have been developed by the institute for the benefit of the stakeholders. The statistics section is providing consultancy services on statistical techniques, undertaking data analysis through computer systems, building up of databases and in-house development of application software for research and administration purposes. The ARIS cell has a Unix system and a LAN setup with internet connectivity. The institute has a website of its own with the URL http sugarcane-breeding.tn.nic.in SBI Coimbatore understands the importance of a ready access to knowledge. We have a well-equipped user-friendly library comprising more than 10,000 volumes. 
for the benefit of readers both on campus and off campus. The library subscribes to a number of Indian and foreign journals, to electronic databases such as EBSCO and CD databases such as Agris, Agricola, etc. It has been a long and eventful journey for SBI. There was excitement at every corner and a sense of satisfaction to contribute to the growth of the nation. A sense of achievement as we see the farmers using the varieties and technologies developed by us and benefit from it. Looking ahead, SBI has visions of making India the leading nation in sugar production in the world. We may seem to have achieved a lot, but deep within, we know we still have miles to go.